In this lesson, we're going to learn how to use the Interpolate extension in Inkscape. The Interpolate extension is located in the Extensions menu under the Generate from Path category, and it lets us do a linear interpolation between two or more selected paths. This basically means it lets us create transitions between the shapes of selected paths, similar to the Blend tool in Adobe Illustrator. Let's begin by creating a couple objects. I'll switch to the Stars and Polygons tool and create a five-cornered star. And I'm going to switch to the Select tool and duplicate the star with Ctrl D and move it over here. I'll shrink this down and change the color. Now I'm going to switch to the Node tool and rotate the star with this outer handle. And now I'll hold Shift and drag the handle in some, which will round the corners. I'm also going to hold Alt and drag the handle to randomize the angles a bit. Okay, so before we can use the Interpolate extension on these objects, we first need to turn them into paths. So let's switch to the Select tool, Shift-click the other star to add it to the selection, and go to Path, Object to Path. Now we can interpolate them by going to Extensions, Generate from Path, Interpolate. This brings up the Interpolate dialog, and we can go ahead and check Live Preview here to see what we get. Alright, so you might have gotten a different result if you have different settings here, but for me, I have three new paths here that are some transition of the shapes of the two original paths, and all of the paths are using the color of the path I selected first. The number of transition paths we get depends on the Interpolation Steps setting here. If we change it to something else, like 5, then click in one of the other boxes, we will get 5 transition paths. And if we want to interpolate the style of the original paths as well, we can check this Interpolate Style box. The top setting, Exponent, will change the amount of distance between the interpolation steps. When it's on 0, we get equal distance between the paths. If we set it to something higher than 0, like 1, the transition paths start out very close near the first selected path, then spread out more and more. Setting exponent to a negative number will have the opposite effect. I'll set it back to 0. The next setting, Interpolation Method, will change the method that is used for determining how to create the shapes of the transition paths. We actually only have two options for this, 1 and 2. Here's what method number 2 looks like. There isn't a huge difference between the methods with these two paths, but if we start using more complex shapes, the methods can have quite different results. I'll set it back to 1. Next we have Duplicate in Paths. I'm not actually going to click the Apply button right now, but if I do, Inkscape will create a group of all the transition paths. And with Duplicate in Paths checked, it will also duplicate the original paths and add them to the group. If we uncheck the option, it won't duplicate the originals. It doesn't matter too much, so I'll just leave mine checked. I have one more setting here, Use Z Order, but this is actually being deprecated. So if you're using a later version of Inkscape than I am, you might not even see this one, so we can skip it. Alright, let's close out this dialog for now, and create a third object to add to the interpolation. I'll go with an ellipse. Let's change the color, turn it into a path by going to Path, Object to Path, select all three paths, and do Interpolate. Let's go ahead and check Live Preview. Okay, now we're interpolating three paths. And actually, interpolation steps applies to each pair of adjacent paths. So we get five transition paths here and five here. Also, let's try interpolation method two. That looks better. Now let's click apply and close out the dialog. So now we have two groups of paths, one for each pair of original paths. And because we had duplicate in paths checked in the dialog, the groups also contain duplicates of the original paths. Let's now see how we can use interpolate on text. So let's activate the text tool here and click in the canvas. I'll just type the word text in capital letters. Now let's switch to the select tool, hold control and scale this up some. Interpolate looks a bit better with sans serif fonts, so I'm going to open the text and font dialog by clicking this button in the commands bar, then choose something like Arial Bold and click Apply. Now we can close out this dialog. Now I'll give this an orange fill. 
Let's now duplicate this with Control D, move it up into the right some. And I will make this a very light orange. Now let's press this button in the controls bar to move it behind the other text. Next we want to turn this into a path by going to Path, Object to Path. And this actually gives us a group of paths. So we want to click this button in the commands bar to ungroup them. Let's do the same for the other text object. Okay, now we're going to do interpolate on each pair of letters. So I will select the first front T, then shift click the back T, and because we previously used the interpolate extension, we can just go to extensions, previous extension settings to bring up the interpolate dialog. Let's go ahead and check live preview. All right, so one thing we haven't really discussed yet is that the results we get with interpolate actually depend on the order in which we select the original paths. We selected the front T first, and it's actually putting the front T all the way at the back when we interpolate. This might be what we want, but if we would prefer it to go the opposite way, we can close out the dialog, deselect everything, select the back T first, then shift click the front T, and now if we open the dialog again and preview it, it's interpolating from the front T down to the back T. And we can add some more steps to make it look smoother. Okay, let's click apply, close this out, and do the same with the next pair of letters. And this time we can just go to extensions, previous extension, or use the shortcut Alt Q, which will automatically apply the previous extension with the settings we previously used. For these, I will press Alt Q. Okay, cool. Now we have a 3D text effect. Let's do one more interpolation. For this one, I will switch to the pen tool and create a zigzagging path. I'm going to shift click a color down here to change the stroke color. And I'll right click in the stroke width box here and make it something bigger like 4. Now I'll switch to the select tool, duplicate this with control D, hold control and move it down here. And I'll make this one a different color. Now if we select both of these and open the interpolate dialog, we can get a gradient effect. And one last thing to note about interpolation is that the results we get actually depend on the direction of the nodes of each original path. So at the moment, the nodes of both of these paths are going from left to right. But if we select just one of them and go to Path Reverse, the nodes of this path are now going from right to left. Now if we select both of the paths and interpolate them, we get this twisty effect. So if you don't get the exact results you want with interpolate, you can try rotating, flipping, or reversing the nodes of one or more of the paths. Okay, so that's how we use the interpolate extension. I hope you enjoyed the lesson, and I will see you in the next one.